Roadrunner Rundown on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. The screen, Basil, two seconds. Basil for the win! Yeah! We're going to the ACL! We're going to the ACL! And it's a cold strike three over the inside corner, and Bakersfield has done it! They win the WAC championship! And over to Sydney Haynes off the block, and the Roadrunners Live win it! Live from downtown Bakersfield, California, here's the voice of the runners, Corey Costello. Welcome in once again to Roadrunner Rundown, the official program CESUB Roadrunner Athletics. Thanks so much for joining us on another Tuesday. We've got a great program for you on today's show. We're going to be talking a lot about the 45th Annual Spring Barbecue, which is coming up this Thursday at the Icardo Center. We'll be serving dinner from 530 to 9. The chairman of the Spring Barbecue, John Jamara Jr., will join us coming up in the next segment. Also, this year's entertainment is Stampede. A lot of folks around Baker, so they've heard of them. They play the Crystal Palace on, the, on a uh, regular basis. And Virgil Schwartz, the drummer for Stampede, will come in and chat with us about uh, their band and their style of entertainment, which will be coming to the Spring Barbecue on Thursday as well. Tickets, $30 in advance, $35 at the door, and the weather's going to be beautiful this week, so we will see you on Thursday at the Icardo Center for the Spring Barbecue. But we'll be talking with John Jamar Jr. and uh, Virgil Schwartz, uh, two big parts of the barbecue this year. Also on the program, final segment, we'll be speaking with Giovanna Mello, our director of volleyball, and assistant volleyball coach uh, Mackenzie Westfall about their upcoming volleyball camps. We're getting to the end of our season in terms of this show, and but of course the summer means a lot of summer camps. If you're looking for something to do for the kids, go to GoRunners.com right now and click on the camps link. You can see all the different sports camps we have available. Volleyball's got a couple of camps coming up, so if you got little kids, they, they'll take kids like six years old, so uh, all the way up to uh, high school. They've got different camps going on throughout the summer, so we'll have uh, Giovanna Mello and uh, also Mackenzie Westfall on the program to talk about the volleyball camps coming up uh, this summer at CESUB, and again, other sports coming up. We'll talk about basketball camps next week on the show because they got a bunch of stuff happening too. So all that stuff coming up this summer at the uh, at CSUB. But time to get to some highlights from last week. Let's start with CSUB baseball. They were at home hosting Northern Colorado in WAC play. And we'll start with Friday night. Max Carter on the mound, and gosh, he was special again. Carter perfect through six and two-thirds, a few strikeouts in the process, and uh, the runners were rolling. They strike first, bottom of the fourth. Andrew Penner with the sacrifice fly with one out. He's going to put a runner at third base as Mark Pena advances for CESUB, putting them in striking distance. Then David Metzger, he leads the nation in these. Sacrifice flies his 29th RBI of the season as uh, Penner comes in, or Pena comes in to score. CESUB leads it one to nothing. Fifth inning, one out for Junior Felix, who singles to the left side, and uh, that's going to set the runners up once again as Malik Jones advances the third. Next hitter, Brandon Heinrich, an excuse me single. It's going to find some grass, and he's going to find himself an RBI. Runners up two to nothing. Bases loaded, one out, one out for Penner, who goes the opposite field to drive in two more runs and see yes should be now in control here four to nothing David Metzger he would have his 23 game hitting streak come to an end this night but not before he picked up his second sack fly RBI. Again, he leads the nation in sack fly RBIs as well. 5 nothing CSUB after that shot. As we mentioned earlier, Max Carter flirting with perfection for the second time in three weeks. He, uh, well, perfect game into the six. He gets a strikeout. Little defense, too, on a pop out there. And uh, we take it into the seventh after hitting the, uh, retiring the first 20. He faces more defense from Ryan Grojohn, but then two outs in the seventh to leave it to the best hitter from Northern Colorado, Jack Polly, to ruin the fun. He singles to the left to end the perfect game bid, but the Bears don't score in the inning. Eighth for CESUB, Sergio Robles making the most of his last two weeks. He drives in another insurance run to make it six to nothing. CESUB runners then in the ninth inning. They have Carter to finish this one out. His third complete game shutout of the WAC season as he allows just three hits, and the runners win game one, six to nothing on Friday. Saturday night action. Remember the uh, Roadrunners. Remember David Metzger? Yeah, he was hitless on Friday night, but he had those sack flies. Yeah, he remembers he was hitless too. And uh, pretty much for Metzger, enough of that nonsense. RBI triple. This one's going to go a long way into the gap. He finds the wall. Roadrunners find the plate. As the scoring from first on the play was Andrew Penner on the hit and run. Metzger is going to pick up his second triple of the week. And CES should be on top on Saturday, 
one to nothing. Second inning, Jake Ortega stay hot. He finds some room on the right side to put CSUB uh, with runners on second and third. Nobody out. Ortega stretching that into a double for the Roadrunners. And then Pena going to ground out to the left side, but that's going to score Malik Jones to make it 2 nothing. Roadrunners. Then later in the inning, Sergio Robles, the sack fly to score Ortega from third. And here in the second inning, CSUB would take a 3 to nothing lead. Moving on, runners then going to add three more in the fourth. They're up 6-1 in the fifth. Watch this scary moment. Dylan Shiraki on the mound. Look out. Comebacker nearly takes his head off. He was just able to deflect it with the glove. Another look from Shiraki. Look, he just barely gets the glove up to just get it away from his head. And uh, another hit for Jones. Then Felix at the plate. Jones going to get a stolen base. One for five for the road runner. One of five for the runners on the night. Top seven after not scoring with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Two outs before CSUB getting out of another jam. The pop up here. And then uh, with two away, runners in scoring position. Andrew Hansen recording the strikeout to hold the Bears' threat down. Bottom seven. Jones back at the plate. He records his third hit of the game in the infield and CSUB is threatening again. Then with runners on the corners, ball gets away from the catcher. Jones scores and CSUB leads it 7-1. to one. Then for the third time this week, Junior Felix a double and more than that, an RBI double, a two RBI double as CSUB takes control late and the Roadrunners are rolling. Still not done as Cole Valletta for CSUB. He's going to find some room up the middle. Runners could have pulled on the mercy rule, but they kind of called the dogs off a little bit as uh, they get a few guys in to play in the ball game. Then Isaiah Moten in the ninth to close it out gets the pop up, and the runners win the first two games of the series with a 10 1 win on Saturday. They went on to sweep the series on Sunday. So the runners get Max Carter perfect through six and two thirds. He improves to eight and one. He was named Whack Pitcher of the Week, and he made the College Baseball Association's National Team of the Week for this past week as well. So he goes a perfect game through six and two thirds. The three hit shutout. Runners win at six to nothing on Saturday night. The runners getting a 10 1 victory. Three hit nights for David Metzger and Andrew Penner each as the runners uh, dominated on Saturday. And then on Sunday, it was even uglier. Runners with the seven inning mercy rule win 14 to 3 over Northern Colorado. Here's what's coming up for the Roadrunners. A busy week. This, the, here are two non-conference games. They're going to play today at Cal State Northridge at 3 p.m. Then they're back at home on Wednesday night hosting Loyola Marymount at 6 p.m. And then their final home series of the season. It is an important conference series as well. They'll take on Seattle U. Friday, 6 p.m. in Hartfield. Saturday, 6 p.m. at Hartfield. And Sunday at 12 p.m. at Hartfield. Here's why they're important. The runners in the mix of things. Grand Canyon right now, top of the league. Pretty much of uh, well, they, they haven't quite wrapped up the, their championship, but they're about one way win away from the regular season title. But they're still ineligible for the postseason. Their final year of being ineligible. So as it stands for the conference tournament, New Mexico State and CES should be the top two seeds. That means a first round bye. So the runners right now 11 and seven. Very important in this series coming up with Seattle U, who's at the bottom of the standings, who is fighting for their lives. Remember the top six teams in. So right now, New Mexico State, CES should be Utah Valley, Sac State, Chicago State, along with. UTRGV would be in. Seattle U and Northern Colorado would be out. Seattle, would, by the way, was picked to win the regular season. So right now, they're just trying to get into the conference tournament, and uh, it'll be a big series for both the teams coming up this weekend at Hart Field. So the uh, Roadrunner softball team, speaking of conference tournaments, they are going to start theirs Thursday. They're going to be at Las Cruces, New Mexico. New Mexico State, the host. Runners as the five seed will take on UMKC Thursday at 11 a.m. The winner will face top seed in New Mexico State later that evening. Here's a look at the bracket. You see CSUB and UMKC off to the left. Winner will take on New Mexico State later on that evening. The loser falls into the loser's bracket. It's a double elimination tournament. All these games you can watch on the WAC Digital Network. And speaking of championships, CSUB track and field. I'm telling you, they're expecting to bring home some gold. Let's just say that. The runners at the WAC championships at UTRGV this weekend, May 10th through the 13th. Runners with um, good chances in events like pole vault, high jump, and all sorts of good stuff. So CSUB with a big opportunity at the WAC championships coming up this weekend. We'll have details on the results on next week's show. Uh, speaking of results, a uh, couple weeks ago, we were off last week because the night before we had our big annual Rowdies Award show at the Fox Theater. Great event, one of the best shows yet, and uh, here is a short recap recap of last week's Rowdy's festivities.
The sixth annual Rowdies returned to the Majestic Fox Theater on May 1st with several hundred in attendance honoring the academic and athletic achievements by CESB student athletes this past season. From the gold carpet entrance to the awards presentation, this event highlights the best of the Roadrunners every year. Here are the winners from the 2017 Rowdies. Winner of the Clutch Performer of the Year is Russell. The Road Warrior Award goes to Lindsay Clemming. First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to all of you um, for your academic success um, this year. With all the changes to from quarters to semesters and different courses, you all have risen to the challenge. The winner is Angel Valdez. The winning team for the Rudy Carvajal Community Service Award is Women Swimming. And this year's best individual contest winner goes to Paola Hernandez. The winner for the female ADs Make a Difference Award is Tori Pierce. which is the Student Athlete Hall of Fame and is the highest honor bestowed amongst the CSUB student athlete. On behalf of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, we'd like to award Women's Water Polo. And the winner of the 2017 President's Award for males is David Mayer. Yeah! For a female student athlete is Nicola Bell. And there you have it. Thanks to all those who made the 2017, the sixth annual route is a huge success, and uh, we will see you next year. All right, we're going to step away and take a break. When we come back, we're going to be speaking with the Spring Barbecue Chairman, John Jamara Jr., 45th annual Spring Barbecue coming up Thursday. We'll talk all about it. This is Roadrunner Rundown.
What shall I do to put myself by your side? What shall I do to put myself along by your side? We're Kern County, and we have a lot in which to be proud. We connect California, power the nation, and confidently charge towards our short and long-term goals. We work hard to make our county a great place to live, learn, and dream. And anyone who calls Kern County home can help make our community stronger, schools better, and futures brighter. Together, let's turn more local dreams into realities so we can make life as it should be. Kern Schools, together we have something special. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us, our professors and peers, our coaches and teammates, and our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they can inspire us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. So to come on the program, we're going to be speaking with uh, Virgil Schwartz. He's the uh, drummer for Stampede. He's going to be the entertainment, uh, part of the entertainment at the 45th Annual Spring Barbecue coming up on Thursday. And speaking of which, we have the uh, barbecue chairman here in studio, John Jamara Jr. Good to see you. How you been? Fine, Corey. Great. Looking forward to the barbecue this coming Thursday, the 11th yeah. and, uh, at Cal State Bakersfield. And uh, it's going to be a great, great event. And I hope all your viewers can can attend. Well, and, and it's kind of a small milestone. Again, this is the 45th year. I mean. <laughs> this is the 45th year I've been doing this for, uh, 44 times. This will be the 45th. Wow. Uh, 45 years ago, a group of friends and I got together and uh, tried to figure out a way to raise funds for the athletic programs at Cal State mm -hmm. Bakersfield because the school was r relatively new, really at that, new yeah. at that stage of the game. And so someone came up with the idea of a barbecue to raise the funds, and so we started with the first one with 300 people, primarily friends of the group, sure. and uh, now it's evolved into an event that has over 3,000, and uh, over the 45 years has raised $2.7 million wow. for the athletic program. That's incredible. And I get, and then really the, now venues have changed and th you know, things have changed. It's gotten bigger, but really the, the formula has pretty much stayed the same, you know, food, steaks, chicken, you know, friends, and, uh, it's, it's worked out. You haven't had to change that much, I guess. No, not that much. <laughs> uh, we've added, uh, a, a band. Sure. In fact, uh, two bands this year with a Western theme and, uh, the steaks, uh, of course are from Harris, Mm -hmm. ranch and they're really really good and then we have marie calendar pies and and beans and salsa and salad yeah. and uh, so it's it's a great it's not only a great uh fundraiser for the school but a lot of fun for the people uh, and they should be proud of the fact that they're helping the student athletes at cal state have you as one of the people that obviously started this thing and and those of you have been around for a while with Tim's event do you kind of look back and just kind of think wow, how far this has kind of come to where you're at now and you're serving about 3,000 meals. Well, no question about it. Uh, uh, it started small and grew uh, over the years. Uh, but what, I'm, what really strikes me is the, is the performance of the Cal State uh, athletic program. Uh, over that period of time, uh, for the first uh, 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 36 years, we won 30 national championships mm -hmm. in division two more than any school in the united states right and uh now that we're in division uh, one uh we've uh, produced uh, through the athletic program 65 
uh, All Americans, which is incredible. Yeah. And I've uh, won six Western Athletic uh, Conference championships in three years. Yeah. So the barbecue is, is in part uh, responsible for that, but uh, also there are a lot of supporters in town who not only attend the barbecue, but uh, contribute to the uh, athletic fund for Cal State student athletes. You know, what was it like uh, for you? We were kind of talking about it off air, but when, you know, obviously being around the division two years and the success, but then seeing the last couple years, especially with men's basketball, NCAA tournament last year, and then this year, the NIT run, you know, the first eight seat ever to go to the semifinals at Madison Square Garden. For you, for a guy who started really helping the department out when it was a few, I don't know, maybe a few hundred student athletes at the most in the 70s, and now all of a sudden, you're watching him on ESPN at Madison Square Garden play. I mean, incredible. what was that like? <laughs> incredible, incredible. You know, is that is that team from Bakersfield? <laughs> My God, you know, when you consider uh, the NIT as an example, uh, 32 teams, as I recall, yeah. are selected from uh, around the United right. States, some of the best teams in the country, and to have Bakersfield included in that, and not only included in that, but then it wins its division yeah. – and goes back to the semifinals, which you were there. You called the yeah. game, and uh, a fantastic result uh, of hard work from the athletic program and and from the donors throughout the city of Bakersfield. Yeah, and special events like this are a huge part of that. What's kind of the planning process like for something like this? I mean, you guys kind of spend most of the year thinking about and kind of getting things planned for this next barbecue coming up. Right. Well, we have chairman of the various uh, aspects of the barbecue from ticket sales to the, the dancing uh, to the barbecue itself, cooking mm -hmm. the steaks, cooking the chicken. And so they're all volunteers. And uh, uh, and then, of course, the student athletes, uh, they set it up, they serve, and uh, th and they clean up afterward. So uh, it's, a, it's a real community effort involving not only the students, but with a lot of community people too. For sure. Now what over the years what's kind of been the most rewarding part for you and the folks involved to see um, you know what 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 had really made you feel good about the work you put into an event like this? Well, I would say that uh, not only the achievements of the athletic program but uh, you know these are student athletes and uh, uh, we tend to look at them just as athletes but they Actually, cumulatively, uh, they've averaged over three-point uh, grade point yeah. average, uh, higher than the general population of the school, yeah. and they have a higher graduation percentage than the general population at the school. So to see that we've recruited not only really great athletes, but also great students that can make the uh, uh, community proud and I say community because many of these uh, youngsters, uh, when they graduate, they go out in the community, yeah. become part of the community, and uh, and they contribute their time while they're at school. Last year, over 4,000 hours were contributed by student athletes to community programs. Mm -hmm. And and that's and that's again a byproduct of of these special events and and the supporters that we've had. Do you have a in well forty four previous years a favorite barbecue or a favorite barbecue moment or memory about this event that uh, you'd like to share? Oh, I I can't say that I've had a favorite one, but uh, you know the weather always plays a factor sure. in this, and we've had just about every kind of weather you can <laughs> we imagine have. from plus hundred degree days to rain. Yep. Uh, to wind, uh, but uh, no matter rain or, or shine, uh, the people turn out. Yeah. And uh, so I can't say that I, I have a favorite one. They've all been a lot of fun. For sure. And and we kind of had, like, last year it was really hot. The year before, it rained. But this year we're expecting really perfect, ideal. You know, the high on the day is 85, so by the time people start coming to the – you know, to the barbecue, it's going to be low 80s into the 70s overnight. I mean, right. we're looking at a good weather day. Oh, yeah, perfect. It's going to be perfect. And I think everyone will see a lot of their friends there yeah. and uh, will have a great time and they have the satisfaction of knowing that they're not only having fun, but they're helping fund yeah. uh, many of the athletic uh, teams and individual athletes. And this is kind of a – I mean, this is sort of unintentionally sort of become the – the sort of kickoff to, because May is a very busy month around the community. I mean, everybody's doing there's barbecues, there's other events, but this one kind of seems to be the the Kickstarter, right? I mean, it, unintentionally, it's become sort of the start of the 
the the the spring uh, festival season always seems to be the CSUB spring barbecue. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then the others follow, and everyone's trying to raise funds. Sure. But fortunately, uh, the community has really supported Cal State with the fundraising, and I expect that to continue in the future because uh, we're fielding uh, great teams yeah. and individual athletes. Absolutely. Well, John, I appreciate your uh, support of this event for 44 and now 45 Five years, years. <laughs> when, yeah. you're, when you're done on Thursday, and you'll start planning for 46 probably very soon after. Very right? soon, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, appreciate your time, and Corey, uh, we'll th see you on Thursday. Okay, thanks All for right, having appreciate me. appreciate it. We'll be right back, folks. Uh, Virgil Schwartz going to join us from Stampede. They're going to be one of the bands on stage on Thursday. We'll talk about that. Also, Giovanna Mello, Mackenzie Westfall from CSUB Volleyball. To about, talk about their upcoming summer camps. We'll be back. It's Roadrunner Rundown. A masterpiece of intelligence awaits you with technologies no car has ever offered. This is the all-new 2017 E-Class from Mercedes-Benz. This new E-Class is clearly the most technologically sophisticated vehicle developed with innovations that enhance efficiency, safety, and comfort, including the world's first fully integral car-to-X communications, providing information well in advance of imminent danger. This new E-Class carries Mercedes-Benz tradition well into the future. And you can see the all-new 2017 E-Class today at Mercedes-Benz of Bakersfield. A Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. My thanks to uh, Barbecue Chairman John Jamara Jr. He'll be out there on Thursday along with the head chefs Gary and Adam Icardo as a part of the 45th annual CSUB Athletic Spring Barbecue. Great, uh, great kickoff to the spring festival season around Kern County. And uh, one of the other gentlemen that will be there along with uh, the band Stampede is uh, the drummer Virgil Schwartz. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, you, so you guys got the, you guys got the call that uh, hey, do you want to play the spring barbecue? Right. We got, we got the call and we were we were we talked about it we don't normally play outside the palace it's yeah. just something that's just we just don't do a lot of and we got the call and talked about it and and we're all about the community yeah and uh, when this came up we we absolutely jumped on the chance to do it we were excited about it we can't wait to get it get in there and get it done yeah as you mentioned i mean most people have seen you at the palace and uh how many how many days a week days a month are you guys playing the crystal palace we play most friday and saturday nights. okay so wow. it just depends. Uh, if there's a show on a Friday or Saturday, obviously we wouldn't play that. But, sure. But most Friday and Saturday night, Stampede will be there. Excellent. So you get a chance to do a little different, take the show on the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can exactly. Say. Yeah. You're uh, you're a little mini tour in Bakersfield. You'll go to the uh, you'll go to the Spring Barbecue. Uh, but I mean, the show's gonna pretty much stay the same, right? I mean, you guys are gonna play what you normally like to play. We're gonna play the same thing that you'd go to the Palace and see. So uh, and, and we're gonna we're gonna mix it up a little bit. We we try to cater to a lot of we get a lot of a lot of different uh, age groups yeah. that come into the palace. So we got to try to 
to please some of the elders and some of the, <laughs> some of the young people. We want gotcha. to get the young people coming, so we'll, we'll throw some new stuff in there. And then we'll throw a little bit of funk in there once in a while, too. Nice. Okay. So we try to really cater to the people. So uh, we'll, you'll see a lot of that uh, this Thursday. What would you say the specialty of, uh, of, of Stampede? What's your bread and butter? <laughs> well, country music, of course. Right. Uh, we, we, we try to keep it to the middle of the road. Like I said, do a little uh, older country and then some of the newer country, but country's our bread and butter for sure. Yeah. Any, uh, I know you guys probably, I think you, someone said you know probably every Buck Owens, Merle Haggard song out there, right? Yeah, <laughs> most, most of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, uh, so, so, you know, this, this band, I mean, talk about the guys in a little bit and this group. I mean, you've been together for a while, correct? Yeah, the, the, the band's been around, I believe, 16, 17 years. Yeah. They've been at the Palace. I've been with them about six years now, um, but I, although I've known them all for about the same amount of sure. time. Yeah, about 16, 17 years anyway. But uh, they, they asked me to join about, I guess, six years ago. Yeah. And I was happy to do it and jumped at the chance and been there ever since. That's a great call to get. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and and what's the commitment like? Like you said, most Friday and Saturday nights you're there. I mean, yep. and then, I mean, what's what's the kind of time commitment like for a band like Stampede? It, it's, it's, it is a lot of time involved. Um, but it's uh, it's something that uh, I always say it's it's not what you uh, it's not what you do it's who you are yeah. it's in your blood and it's something we really enjoy to do and it, and uh, we we enjoy doing it so it's something you have to do yeah <laughs> and it's such it, it's been crazy to see too all the and maybe this because of the advent of the internet and and things like. Uh, iTunes and people being able to, to see different music, but it amazes me how um, much of a almost international destination the Crystal Palace has become. People from all over the world want to come see Buck's Place, and you guys are on stage. I mean, do you get that? Do you see a lot of people from all over the world, essentially, your shows? Yep, absolutely. We see people from uh, Australia, Japan, China, I mean, all over the place, man. It's just amazing. Switzerland, we had people from Germany, <laughs> it, all over the world. We get people from, of course, you know, like L.A., and then we right. had people come in from Oregon just to see us. Wow, it's amazing, but we're excited to do the barbecue, and that's what we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get it on uh, Thursday night. A absolutely. So uh, you get a chance to play. Uh, you're gonna be playing. You know, like you said, you just don't go outside of the palace, but now you're gonna be playing outside too. So it's gonna kind of be more of a festival atmosphere for you. You guys ready for that? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> we're, getting, we're gonna get her set up Thursday, and we'll be ready to go by Thursday night for the barbecue. Excellent. How uh, how long have you been? Not only not, uh, we know six years in the band, but when did you start? drumming when did you kind of pick up on music <laughs> i've been playing myself uh gosh about about almost 40 years wow yeah and uh what what kind of made you say like oh, i want to do this and and again you join a band like stampede where there's a lot of time involved so what uh you know what, what kind of made you say all right i want to take this to the next level and really put some serious time into this Oh yeah, it, you know what? It, it it just kind of happens. It's not a it's not really almost a thought process. It's yeah. just something that that just uh, just happens to you, you know. And you, you and you, an opportunity comes along and a door opens and you and you you walk through it and you, and you just go for it. Yeah, that's you cool. Know? You know, you you as you mentioned, a uh, chance to s help CSUB athletics playing at the barbecue. What uh, I mean, as a community community member, a citizen, you've got a chance to sort of see. The, what's happened at CSB the last few years with the success. I mean, what's it been like for you to kind of be on the outside looking in and seeing really the notoriety that the, the program has been bringing to the city? Well, absolutely. You know, I mean, I was born and raised in Bakersfield, so I'm homegrown. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to watch the, the growth of, of Cal State and to see the barbecue get bigger and bigger and bigger every year, and then uh, we were like going, hey, man, that's, that's a pretty big deal, you know. And then all of a sudden we get this call and we're like, hey, absolutely, man. Let's, let's do it for the community. Let's, yeah. do, it for, let's do it to help, help with uh, the barbecue. And I'm uh, happy to do it. Really awesome. excited. Had you come out of the barbecue before just as a attendee? You know, I, no, actually, this will, <laughs> this will be my first barbecue. Nice, okay. So, uh, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited to do it because I want to see what it's really all about. I just haven't had a chance. Right. I'm always so busy or probably playing music or sure. something every time that night comes up. So, yeah. Uh, really excited to do it. Right. I'm sure. And I'm sure with you guys playing Friday, Saturday shows, Thursday is probably like your one night you normally where you're either practicing or you're just kind of getting ready for the weekend. So, I'll give you a pass on not being at the barbecue. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks. appreciate it. Well, uh, and, and what's so what? I mean, what your ba the band is at the you know playing pretty much every weekend. Any other music projects on the side? Do you guys have other things? I know once in a while you put out uh, you know CDs, things like that. I mean, is there any of those projects working? Right. No, we we've really got nothing uh, on the horizon right now. Um, got a couple of things. We we once in a while we will get some people that say, hey, my my granddaughter is 
wants to, you know, would like to get up and sing with you guys oh, and nice. once in a while. So we got a little project going with that, but um, nothing major, nothing major yeah. right now. Have you guys had you guys do you guys get the chance to play, I guess, back up or with some people that sometimes visit the palace? Yeah, once in a great while, not not too often. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we had Wade Hayes came in, yeah. I think maybe a couple of years ago. He came in and and did an acoustic set. Then we were gonna play after him. Yeah. And then uh, we started playing, and he got up and grabbed a guitar and came up and played with us and probably played about an hour and a half with us. And cool. man, I'll tell you what, that was a special night. I'll bet. Yeah. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. What, uh, have there been one or two, I mean, musicians in your career, but people that have inspired you to help and you, maybe that you really enjoy and really kind of, you know, emulate or just kind of inspired you as a musician? Locally? Locally, nationally? Oh, well, <laughs> internationally? I mean, you know, there's a lot of great bands and a lot of music that I yeah. listen to. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a genre. Uh -huh. I mean, I like, I like everything from, you know, from rock and roll, I mean, and there's a lot of drummers out there that I really like, and yeah. a lot of just musicians that I really like. So it's hard to say just right. just one, but just one or two. Yeah, and uh, and and genre wise, I mean, like you said, you're kind of all over the board, especially as a drummer. You got to be like over the, all over the board, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to. You have to, <laughs> you have to know it. Not one exactly thing th that, that you got to specialize in, right? Uh, and, and so that, you guys coming up Thursday at the uh, at the Icardo Center Spring Barbecue, and uh, the band is re the band is stepping out a little bit. Yeah. For uh, for Thursday's this event, is, this is going to be exciting. I think we're gonna have, we're gonna all have a good time, and the band included. But it's really for the people at the yeah. barbecue, right? Yeah. But we're we're excited. We're, we're we're gonna have a good time. We're all gonna have a good time that night. I can't awesome. wait. Yeah, looking forward to it. Virgil Schwartz with Stampede. Hey, uh, good luck on Thursday. We'll see you out there. Great. And I appreciate you coming by. Appreciate the band coming to the barbecue and uh, lending your uh, your expertise to us. And uh, we will uh, we'll see you then. Great. Thanks, Corey. All right, appreciate it. We'll right, be man. back, folks, in the talks of volleyball camps. Giovanna Mello and Mackenzie Westfall coming up to talk about the summer camps with CSB Volleyball. Back after this, it's Roadrunner Rundown. What shall I do to put myself by your side? What shall I do to put myself along by your side? For more than 75 years, Current Schools has been helping local people achieve local dreams. We have watched piggy banks empty to reward a job well done, supported our teams, and tried our best to make life a little easier. We have been there when friends become parents, buy their family's first car, and build a home with a life to match, just like it was dreamed to be. Beyond Dollars and Cents is our pride of Kern County and the people who make it such a great place to call home. Together, let's turn more local dreams into realities so we can make life as it should be. Current Schools, together we have something special. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us, our professors and peers, our coaches and teammates, and our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they can inspire us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. A Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders. From lessons learned during competition, for more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. On the screen, Basil, two seconds. Basil for the win! Yeah! CSU Bakersfield, champions made here.
And welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. My thanks to Virgil Schwartz joining us in the last segment. The um, drummer for Stampede, they'll be the band at the Spring Barbecue coming up on Thursday. And, you know, it is uh, after the Spring Barbecue, we're really getting to the point of the season where, you know, we'll be done with a lot of our home events after baseball this weekend. And then parents got to start thinking about summertime. What are you going to do with your kids? Because babysitters are expensive, and they just hang around, and they're playing Xbox all day <laughs> and Game Boys. And bubble gum and all that bad stuff. So we've got summer camps at CESU. We've got a lot of them. We're joined in the studio now by Director of Volleyball, Giovanna Mello, and Assistant Coach uh, Mackenzie Westfall. Ladies, thanks for joining us. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, you have volleyball camps coming up, and a lot of them this summer, right? We do, yes. yes. Let's uh, tell the folks about some of the offerings uh, you got coming up here with CSUB Volleyball. Well, first, we have our beach volleyball camp, which is actually tonight mm -hmm. from 4.30 to 8.30. And all of our summer camps start July 6th and run until July 15th. And we have an array of camps for all ages from first grade to 12th grade. Oh, okay. So you, you've got, I mean, yeah, you usually have, like, the little kids that uh, come in. and, and it, But you've got it instructed so they can, you know, they've got plenty of attention too, right? Oh, yeah. I think our little runner's camp is one of our most popular ones. We bring in first through fifth grade, and um, we break everything down very simply so you can teach it to any age group, which it makes nice. it really easy to run our camps and really fun for them, too. So. And I think a lot of the girls this year, the returners, are um, planning on coming back, so we should have a lot of them there during the, cam the camps to just... And that's the fun part, too, is yes. it's not mm -hmm. just coaches, but it's the mm -hmm. student-athletes that, that help out. I mean, they seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, I think the kids really like that, and the athletes also do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get a chance to do they do you find what I find a lot too, and I've asked athletes that get a chance to coach in summer camps, they find like they emulate their coaches. Mm -hmm. So they become do they become like little versions of you guys? <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes you proud at that moment. You're yes. like, Yeah, it's we do. We do. uh it's working. What we're doing is uh, what we're doing is working because they're uh they're following in our footsteps. Um and so but you guys also do the specialty camps, right? Mm -hmm. Because volleyball is specialized via position, so you've got a couple different camps going too. We do. We have um, the middle school all skills camp on July 10th and 11th, and then we have the high school all skills, which is the 12th and 13th. And the only specialized camp we have this year is the elite camp, which is for 11th and 12th graders who are planning to play in college, okay. played in club. So that's a little more specialized. Excellent. Now yeah, we're um, not. We're not really. We did. We decided not to do this mm -hmm. at our hitter camp mostly because um, we weren't getting a lot of sure um, people to sign up for. It, so we decided to do all skills, which most of the most of the athletes that we get you know, want to learn a little bit mm -hmm. of everything, so. And uh, folks can go to make it really easy. You guys have your own camp's website, which is awesome, yes. csubvolleyball.com. So it's all there where you can uh, get information about the different camps. And the uh, the, the registration's all there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Little Runners Camp will start, uh, July, like you said, July 6th and 7th. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's $100. And then the All Skills Camp, uh, 175 the, the 10th and the 11th. And then the high school camp, as you said, it kind of goes up with the elite and all that stuff, and that's all available uh, online. So uh, again, csubvolleyball.com. What do you kind of uh, what, what do you what have you seen? Have you seen like especially in your last few years when you guys have been here? Have you seen returning campers and kind of building a rapport and people who are looking forward to come to volleyball camp every summer? I think it's getting better now that we've been here for a while. In the beginning, we struggled a little bit, but now it's getting a little bit better with them wanting to come to the camp and learn. You know, the most important thing for us is that we try to teach them what we do with our kids. Yeah. So it, it's really no different. We, we try to teach them exactly what we teach our girls, and so it, it kind of can build for them if they're interested in ever playing for us. It, it's really a little bit of a building block to get you to know them and learn about them. And so it, it's been getting better, I think, yeah. as we as we gone you know for a few years right as, as you kind of get established and it seems like too I and mean, this is community has i don't know i, I can i can count the club teams on mm -hmm. two hands i mean there's right. quite a few right. so it seems like there's a pretty good following and people are interested in, in continuing the sport throughout the summer yeah for sure we've had a lot of kids that even i remember seeing after they've graduated that have been here for the last three years so it's kind of cool to see even if they don't come to us at csub um it's fun to see how they've grown like over the past few years um, and obviously, our goal is to get them to come to right. us. But um, we have been developing a stronger relationship with the clubs here, and we're trying to get them more involved. Yeah. And we've kind of been talking about maybe even a volleyball night for um, this beach and indoor, so yeah. we can kind of get them out involved and, 
you know, still build the relationship between everyone in the volleyball community here in Bakersfield. So. Nice. And have you have you seen that? Uh, like you said, the goal a lot of it is to get pe- the goal is to get kids thinking about CSUB right, as right. even at six years old. You want them to start thinking that oh, I grew up playing. You want that sentimental mm-hmm. attachment. So when they get to be really good volleyball <laughs> players and they're getting letters from everybody else, mm-hmm. including CSUB, they go, Oh, well, I grew up playing at the volleyball camps at yeah. CSUB. So you want that emotional attachment, right? That's right. kind of the yeah, goal. Definitely. Yeah. Have you got any recruits yet? People who were were you know, have done that yet? I know you've only been here a few years, but... Yeah, I I mean, not necessarily um, since we have been here, but I think uh, the relationships are growing and Mm -hmm. it should be getting better uh, as we... Well, I think the generations, too, I mean, just because we've only been around since the 70s and volleyball's been around even later, you know, later than that when we got, Mm -hmm. when the NCAA started sponsoring women's sports. And so, you know, that, it's been just maybe... We're just finally getting to that second generation or so of kids right. who grow up right. uh, with CSUB and uh, volleyball in uh, in and around them. What's the uh, what's the summer like apart from camps? What's the summer like for you guys? As you get ready for the fall, which will start, gosh, in August, uh, September for your real season. Yeah, we're getting ready, getting prepared, <laughs> trying to finalize the roster, which it's you know ninety percent finalized, <laughs> but you always have one or two sure. kids that you're trying to. Uh, make a decision on especially international kids for us it yeah. happen a little bit later so uh, that's one thing we'll be doing uh, we get a little bit of a break uh, but not much and we just get ready for first season to start yeah going back home at all this summer have you done that already you're going I'm back not, again i'm no? not going no not not this summer uh, my <laughs> mom came and visited me oh once. okay <laughs> there you go so it was every other year trade thing <laughs> yes. one year she pays the next year you pay yes. for the flight <laughs> <laughs> to Brazil. yeah i can yes. see how that is what uh, by the way i want to say congratulations to both of you because last week uh was announced at the ncaa the uh the academic progress rate mm-hmm. and the um the graduation rates essentially mm-hmm. Both beach volleyball, indoor volleyball, mm-hmm. first ever perfect scores yes. for CSUB <laughs> Athletics. Congratulations. So that means Thank every you. senior over the last few years that you guys have touched has turned into a graduate. Yes. That's amazing. Awesome. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Really and you got a couple it. more this year, too. Yes. Yep. So yeah. you'll be keep. Now you want to. Now is it hard now as you think about we want to keep it perfect. We right. Don't right. Want to right. Just not <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. That's what I was talking to Dean about. I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of a pressure. Yeah. Now. It's like when you win a championship, you got to continue you, to. Right, you got yeah. you want to win it again, yeah. Right. And it, yeah, and if you don't, it, then you're thinking, "Gosh, I I want to get back to that level." <laughs> Speaking of which, I mean, what, how does this upcoming team look? I know you're still finalizing the roster, but you guys were the champs in 2014. So, what's uh, the potential to get back to that spot? Yeah, I think we have some pretty uh, very good core br- group returning, mm-hmm. um, really good freshman group coming in. Um, we'll be fairly young, I think. The core group returning, um, you know, not many of them saw a lot of. Court mm-hmm. last year, but they are they've been working really hard this spring, um, and I think they'll be ready for the fall. And the incoming group, um, I think we have a pretty special group coming in. I, they they want it just as much as yeah. the returners. So we should be a young team, but yet a very passionate team that it's yeah. you know I think ready to compete. Yeah, I know it was I know this past season in the uh, in the beach volleyball season just wrapped up. You had some injuries, things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But again, even at the end though, the team right. won a game in the Big right. West tournament, which was great. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so obviously it showed that even the player you might have been playing with players because of injuries, but it seemed like they uh, they got better. Yeah. They did for sure from the beginning to the end of the season. It was awesome to watch the growth that they had. As it's it's a different sport, especially because of the two people on a team. But it was cool to see them all grow mm-hmm. together and actually accomplish a goal that we had set at the beginning. So we went further than we ever had, and yeah. next year hopefully we go further mm-hmm. than that. Well, you know what's crazy is I've seen, and we talked about when we first kind of started the beach program, but the the growth of beach volleyball in general, mm-hmm. and it, it it seems every year. I mean, you're hearing more teams are adding it. For you know, sure. more schools are adding it. The championships are uh, are getting bigger. They're getting more mm-hmm. TV time, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then, in turn, that seems to help the indoor game a little yeah, bit, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I think we've seen the growth from them when they leave the beach and instantly go to the indoor, and you just see physically they're they're just completely different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mentally, too, because yeah. you, ex- you get exposed in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> you can't they're hide. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are doing a lot of the a lot of it at the same time. I mean, some of them are competing, but you also mm-hmm. got your spring practices mm-hmm. going inside. I mean, it seems like every morning I walked into the gym, you guys are practicing. Yes. What do you work on in the spring as you're sort of, because you do have summer coming up, but w- what's kind of being developed with the athletes in the spring as you kind of lay the groundwork? I was working a lot with the setters, mostly because in the sand you can't set as much, yeah. you know, so they can't touch the volleyball in that way. So I was working a lot with them 
uh, just trying to touch the ball and trying to set and get still keep their consistency because as setters you really have to um, you have to maintain that and I was working with them a lot on that and I and then when they came back um, just kind of trying to do a few things that it's you have to change back from mm-hmm. the beach to, to the indoor like digging with your hands which yeah. you can't do uh, <laughs> you know in the sand they poke and we need to open our hands and they're just the little things that they need to yeah. start getting back in our mind which takes a little bit to get used to it again nice and then uh, i know you, uh, we haven't put we haven't put your schedule out yet have we it, it's, it's not out done. no but it's it's, it it's done fairly yeah. finalized yeah. you guys are on the road a bunch again yes, right yeah. yes but heck? we have i mean we have some we're a little closer Good, yeah. we have a tournament in long beach oh okay and, uh, there you we go, go. sex state no we go to fresno state fresno state okay yeah. Yes. There's no flying across the country this year, though, do you? What is it? Uh, I remember. Arkansas. 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 South yeah. Dakota. Okay, yeah. That's like halfway across <laughs> yeah, the country. Not well, it's no not West, too bad. Not, it's not in West Point, right, right where right, you were right. last year. You're not going, <laughs> not going back to New York. All right, uh, again, cicbvolleyball.com is a website, and uh, there's several different options for your uh, children. Again, it's much better to uh, send them to volleyball camp, and uh, it's it, they seem to have a lot of fun. What's your favorite part, Mackenzie, about this, the whole – obviously, probably when they're over, because you spend so much time <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> much time putting camps together um, oh the life of an assistant coach but uh you know what what is your most you know your favorite part about the camps in general i call it coaching butterflies because i just love seeing the look on the kids face when they get a concept that we've been teaching even if it's just something simple as passing or the approach yeah. you see them you see it click in their head and i like to see that oh there you go they actually get it and we taught them <laughs> it's fun and you probably still get that now with your the older kids too when you're just yes. coaching yes. like yes. 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 Got it. finally got it she's in college but she just finally understood what after four years <laughs> <laughs> it happens still. yeah well again and so y'all love that game yes. no, no, just <laughs> you guys had one of those too yes. right what was yeah. how, how was that how'd that it was go a lot of it was fun. Ac- yeah. awesome yeah. molly did a great job setting it up mm-hmm. it was a great turnout we had a lot of alumni people come and we kind of mixed everyone playing with the returners okay. and the older people right and it was great yeah. i mean everyone had a blast and we hung out afterwards and yeah it was a good they time enjoy you know being next to each other i think getting to know each other which we haven't done in the yeah. past and, and the alumni was excited to get to know playing, you know, them playing with them each other and yeah, they, yeah. they liked it. I think it was a lot of fun. Was there still a few alum that could still bring it? Like oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We're trying to And you know, getting feisty else. at each other. I'm like, okay, we need to we need to stop this quick. <laughs> yeah. Exhibition game, people, exhibition <laughs> game, calm down. No, that's great. And I've noticed over the last couple of years, I mean you guys have done a really good job of reaching out to the alumni mm-hmm. and the national championship team from mm-hmm. here. Uh, and, and it seems like a lot of those people are still in the area. They yes. didn't just disperse. I mean, for some reason the volleyball players stuck around and you know, raised families here. Mm-hmm. So you you still have a pretty good base of alumni that that yeah. like to come to games stuff like that we're trying to get him more in you know coming into our games and Uh and and being a part of the games as well so we're trying to reach out to them and and get them in a little bit more involved excellent well uh again csbvolleyball.com is the camps uh, website you can register there and uh the uh after tonight's beach volleyball camp uh, again july 6th and 7th for the little runners camp and then um it's july 7th and or, sorry 10th and 11th for the middle schools camp high school is 12th to 13th and elite is 14th and 15th so busy month of july for you yes, yes. Sir. but then they'll be over and then the season starts yes no rest for the weary all right well uh, ladies thanks for joining us and uh we will uh I'll probably be checking to you chatting to you as soon as we get closer to the start of the season yes. in, in august so, so. Thank you. All right. Good. Good Thanks for having us. All right. You're welcome. All right. That'll do it for us, folks. Hit the show anytime online at GoRunners.com. Next week is our uh, it's our last show of the season. Season number four comes to an end next week. Uh, we'll be talking uh, we'll be talking some CSUB baseball because they'll have their final regular season week getting ready for the conference tournament. Also, uh, hopefully, some track championships to talk about and uh, from on next week. And we'll be previewing basketball camps. They got those coming up too. So we'll be talking more camps on next week's show as well. Get the show anytime online at GoRunners.com. Follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash CHB Roadrunners, Twitter and Instagram at CHB Athletics. We'll catch you next week. This has been Roadrunner Rundown.